Hey, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And today we're reviewing the Allbirds Tree Dasher 2.0. Tree Dasher 2.0. I believe it's a 2.0, like it's an operating system, but yeah. I mean, speaking of operating system, this is like the shoe du jour of computer, uh, like for the like IT guys, I feel like this is their- You think that if you, if you have to call IT, like IT, can someone come fix my computer? And they're like- Someone's coming in these. Real estate brokers, uh, yeah. developers, someone said that on Instagram, I think it's kind of like in their wheelhouse. Yeah, I think if you have the uh, Viore pants, yeah. You're probably gonna throw these on with okay. it. Uh, you know what birds was, like? Birds say. always come back to nest, right? Yeah, they have, they're like homing pigeons. Right? And you wanna come back to this channel. You so do. the easiest way to do it is to subscribe. Yeah, Thank and you. then you'll be like a bird flying home for the Dude, winter. Dude, homing pigeons, I'm kind of into, I thought about getting into pigeon racing before. It's I would do that. I would, if you wanna do that, I'll do it. It's we a could, huge Baltimore thing, so we might need to we could get into it. I'll it's do it. Like, Okay. How about we get a coop, you put one at your house, one at my house, we just have them fly back and forth, oh, it's just like, and we could send like messages instead of text. It's, it's basically like a sprint, like a 400 meter race for those pigeons, so. That'd be so cool, we could, but All I right. only have those robot birds. Oh yeah, the, yeah, because we, there's all, it's just, there aren't birds anymore, they're, yeah. they're not real. Mechanical. It's just robot birds. Okay, anyways, so we're back. Speaking of phony birds, plus, why is this called a tree dasher, because, Trees don't run anywhere. I, yeah, well they do in Lord of the Rings. That is true, or those they, are some they, killer trees. They just walk. Yeah. But anyways, so tree, yeah, tree dasher, I'm not kinda, sure. kind of, yeah. Woonch, woonch, woonch. But like, you figure that step's pretty long. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where the name tree dasher comes from. I think it's because it uses- Tree huggers. Uh, exactly, like that vein. If you don't know about all birds, they're very sustainable. Like everything they use in their shoes is why don't sustainable. We, why don't we go over that first? Cause that's, I mean really, there's no reason to talk about the shoe other than the fact yeah, that I mean, it's a sustainable that's something. A, that's a huge selling point of this shoe for people uh, who care about the environment. Yeah, like millennials, do we? <laughs> yeah, and us, <laughs> sort of, the, who are super into it. I'm the, leaving the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be part of the God. environment soon. So, Robbie, this shoe. I mean, most of the people who like this shoe, it's not just because they want a running shoe. It's because they are like environmentally conscious yeah. and want to feel good about what's on their feet. I believe this is like the most environmentally conscious shoe out there. Pretty much all of it is made from sustainable materials. They also have like a carbon footprint meter on their website that shows like how much offsets of carbon it uses, whatnot. So that's like the core part of their mission. As yeah, a I'd say a value. Yeah. And uh, I mean, because of that, the shoes are a little more expensive, but they, put it together in a package that's pretty comfortable, pretty nice, somewhat unassuming, but now, it's almost so unassuming that it's now like assuming. I think because of the people that wear it. Like it's like, this has like, it's almost like wearing a t-shirt that says, I care about the environment, look at my feet. Mm -hmm. But also, I don't want to stand out too much, so don't look Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it's, yeah. we're not gonna make a big deal out of this, <laughs> but I'm saving the planet. I do think this is a shoe that uh, can be used for a lot of usages, but for all, for this purpose, for the purpose of this video, we're talking about We're a running, running channel, yeah. So let's get into what the shoe's made out of and how it fits and everything else. So let's start with the upper. The upper is made from eucalyptus, uh, which koala bears are into. So I love cool. the eucalyptus. I actually buy a eucalyptus extract and put it in my car. Wait, oh, really? to make it smell better? I like the smell. I like it to, I like it to smell like a spa. Is that what they do in spas? But yeah. We should, oh, wow. You didn't know that? I'll go get it. I didn't know. I, don't, I just thought it was like a essential oil diffuser or something. Yeah. I get sick from, by the way, so don't put that around mm. here. Splash. <laughs> um, so, the, so it is made from eucalyptus, very comfortable. Like walking around in, it's fantastic. It's I get why people love this shoe. Like, oh, really? There's so many people on this shoe, for sure. Uh, it has like a wool, like heel Light, yeah. padding to Hill help counter. secure the heel better, yeah. which is actually a new thing because the heel slippage in the last one was really not good. I mean, that to me though screams slipper. Yeah, I mean, honestly, in a lot of ways, it does feel like a slipper, which is I think why people love this shoe. It's very good for the uh, the Zoom the Zoom class of like, people. You can wear it to Target 
and you, feel like you're still in your living you room. You can wear it to Target, you can wear it to work. I think in the first video, I was like, you can wear it to a funeral. I still think you can wear it to a funeral if you really Especially want. in this color. What do you think of these Cheerios? I don't know, so that's like, obviously, that's their signature look, is the Cheerio lacing system. Reminds me of a boat or a submarine, oh, or yeah. Cheerios. Yeah, I could see it, like the portholes. Yeah. Uh, so. mm. Toot toot. Mm. Uh, but what, you did want to make a joke about the Cheerios. Feel free I did. I, I mean, yeah, Cheerios. <laughs> You're gonna say the cholesterol. Oh yeah, these won't help with your cholesterol unless you run. Yeah. There's uh, no honeybee dancing around. By the way, I looked this up. This is the worst review ever. <laughs> Wait, real quick. I looked up the sugar uh, content content and Cheerios. Not good. It's basically the same as Cap'n Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's. Marketing, Robbie. It's crazy. It tastes bad enough that you're like, mm, this isn't really that good. It's got to be healthy. Right. But then just layer it with sugar. Dude, that blew my mind. The honey, was, you're talking about the honey one. The honey nut sugar. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, you're basically eating candy. It's, it's It was the same as Cap'n Crunch. I'm like, why am I just not eating candy? If you drink berries? your milk afterwards and it tastes like something from Starbucks with like all the sugar in it, then is, you know that you pretty much... I do love yeah. that part. I will say the leasing system on this... <laughs> in, let me get into this because this is a gripe I have. I hate when I hate when shoe companies marry themselves to a certain look or technology that becomes inescapable for them. So, uh, for, like on has the cloud pods. They always have to have the cloud pods, and they're not on. Mm -hmm. And it's really like doesn't help their cause. Mm -hmm. Even Asics with the gel is. I don't think the gel hurts the cause, but I think it holds some negative connotations. Yeah, I mean, we could go through it. We could say Newton with the lugs. We could yeah. say Mizuno with the wave plate. Right. We could say, there's all these times where somebody's like, let's put ourselves in this corner. Mm -hmm. And they've clearly done it with the Cheerio lacing system, which is not good for a running shoe. I will tell you that the fit of this upper is terrible. It's uh, like if you're running one or two miles, it's whatever, it's fine. But if you I went five miles in the shoe uh, on two different runs and I got the worst hot spot, like right where like right behind my big toe. Do you think it's because your foot's sliding around inside? Yeah, because I couldn't you can't tie it any tighter. It's just like it is what it is. OK. And so my foot was sliding all over the place and I was just getting a bad hot spot. I really I couldn't do any more runs in the shoe. Um, and then I even had to like tape my foot up for my other runs the next few days. We really concentrate on the running sector and actually using shoes for what they're designed right. for. Do you feel like if you, the upper works if you're not necessarily like picking up the pace and running like, oh, like I how- I can assure who, you as well it was in picking up the pace. Okay. Yeah, who, <laughs> is, what you're who is this like, yeah. Who is this running shoe for? Well, I think we can, I, I will get into that. Okay. Let me move on to the midsole real I quick. Will, I'm and just we'll jumping all over the place. No, Sorry, that, that's fine. Uh, I, I'm with you. So the midsole, then when we move down, it's a it's called their Sweet Foam midsole. I think it's made out of sugar cane or whatever. Cheerios, Sweet Foam. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah. And I will say that it's better than I thought it would be. Uh, I think it's, it's basically the same as the last version. It's firm, but it's not horribly firm. I would compare it to shoes like the Kinvara or something like that, where Ooh. it's just like, it's, it's, it, and here's the thing, with sustainable companies, you're making these midsoles purely out of sugar cane or what's the other thing, like bean, castor beans or whatever. Castor beans. And it's really hard to get a nice bouncy yeah. midsole just using that. Everybody wants performance shoes that are sustainable. The problem is that we've gotten a taste for what performances with the modern products. Now there is one company that has a great foam that is bio. I don't know if it's talking uh, about Asics. I would know Puma's um, oh. Fast R. The the oh. P Vax is a bio based P Vax. So that's so that's the thing. But I, I, I don't I don't know if it's the same. Exactly. So it's the same with the Asics Joe Nimbus Light. Uh, mm -hmm. That's also bio based, and that actually has a great feeling. Great bounce, midsole. but I do I don't know the exact percentages of right. what's like. Like these guys might be a little bit more like you know how Mandalorian he can't take off his helmet, mm -hmm. but the Boba Fett like has no problem taking off his helmet. Yeah, I feel like Asics shoe is probably like Boba Fett, where it's like I got the helmet on sometimes. Okay, but. You know, Mandalorian is like this shoe where it's like, I ain't ever taking off the I helmet. I see it. Yeah, I, I got that. Okay, you figured it. got it. All right. I was pew, pew. connecting the dots there. For what it is, I think it's a decent midsole. It's not bad. All, the other viewers thought the same thing. Outsole is a natural rubber made from like, I don't know. Rubber? 
<laughs> natural rubber. Rubber trees? Rubber, yeah, yeah. That's a thing, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, definitely. that's where rubber came from, right? Originally. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think originally it was rubber trees, and they said, we're going back to back to its roots. You yeah. See that? Tree. I, ah, root, tree dasher. Got you. Rubber trees. And uh, so originally I thought the grip was really good on this, and then we were <laughs> running in the whole rain. <laughs> like, I think it, it's amazing because it does feel like it would be super grippy, but Robbie and I did some running yesterday that you probably see footage of yeah, in this right video. Yeah, yeah. Where we stopped real quick and Robbie went. <laughs> yeah, I was like trying to take off from those standings and it was like this slipping yeah. on the sidewalk. So not great in the rain. I feel like this is that lifestyle, fitness lifestyle running shoe. Right. And I mean, fair enough, that's their market. So I'm not going to say that you use this for marathon training. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit into that uh, space. I do think for that type of person that and who, you know, who might want to buy something that is sustainably sourced and with a, you know, focus on the environment. I think this is actually a pretty good option. Another person who's great for is like a traveler. One shoe does it all. Exactly. So you can take this, you could take this to meetings, you can take it walk around the city, you can take it to brunch. You and can, maybe get a couple jogs in. Exactly. And I mean, it packs down like crazy and you can get through TSA in a second with these too. Yeah. If you're looking at the shoe because you want it for that purpose, I think you'll be happy with it. Um, it is $135, so for how little is on this shoe, it's not like you would think it might be a little bit cheaper, but that's sustainability. Costs. Is anything weird about the drop or anything? We didn't really cover that. In the... Yeah, so I mean, I didn't feel anything weird. It's pretty pretty normal, 22 and a half stack in the heel, 15 and a half in the forefoot, so that's a seven millimeter drop. Um, yeah, so it's a fairly low stack. Yeah, like, it is a low stack, and that's why I think when you said like Kimbara, you know, for the midsole feel, mm -hmm. you're probably getting a very similar feel out of it. Now, I am looking at this shoe, and, and not every shoe serves a purpose that we're going for. Obviously, when we're running, we're doing training for races, for, you know, just our general fitness. Mm -hmm. We're kind of a little more nerdy about what we want out of a shoe. I think that this is that one of those shoes that's not really aimed at our style of attacking the sport. I, I really feel like this is that Lululemon yeah. slash. Like casual runner. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, like I said, that's fine. And and I'm sure some real runners wear Lululemon, especially yeah. uh, the women. So I, don't I take mean, offense to that. I'm just saying I picture somebody in like their... You know, their tights with the jacket. You're and the... talking about more stereotypical or traditional like type. Yeah. yeah. Which, and I will say, even if you are a runner who's, you know, more focused on marathon training performance, you use a lot of these other shoes, this is still like a good off the run shoe, like lifestyle shoe that in those scenarios where you are traveling or just want to shoot for a mile or two that you can use this. Yeah. Um, so I will. So style-wise, you like the way it looks? Uh, I'm not. I, this isn't my vibe, really. But... Can you get it in different colors? Oh yeah, and there's actually some pretty nice colorways out there. So you know, it's they do a good job with that. Yeah. I um, like the sculpting of the midsole. I think it's actually a really nice looking. Yeah, and I platform. I, I will say one one other thing I want to mention was that obviously it's a pretty wide base here, so that helps with stability. I thought the stability is actually pretty good with this. Yeah, it is wide. And which you kind of need because there's no real structure to the upper. Yeah. Um, and lastly, I didn't say the weight. It's for my size seven and a half. This is actually a women's nine that I'm holding. It is a 9.4 ounces, 265 grams. That's heavy. It is heavier for sure. Mm, um, that's really heavy. Yeah, because it's like comes in at over, it's like 10 ounces for size nine or something, over 10 ounces. Mm. So it's not super, for how little is on this shoe, it's not that light. I didn't have that much of a problem with it, but. I don't know. You also didn't want to run too far in it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I thought, uh, like, it was actually somewhat fun to run in. Like, okay. I don't know. Like, it wasn't the worst. It's just, if it was more secure, it actually wouldn't be too bad. All right. Um, but anyways. So your advice would be to do a little bit of a better lockdown and lacing and then but, you have a shoe? <laughs> but you can't do it. You can't do it because they're stuck to the Cheerio stuff. Guys, you can let the Cheerios go. Like, you literally cannot, you just can't tighten it enough to secure it. Like, it just, it's just What if there was a Velcro thing here? Uh, <laughs> I can't put Velcro straps on there, sure. So, Robbie, as a performance running shoe, what does this shoe get? As a performance running shoe, this shoe gets a red. As a lifestyle running shoe, what does this, this get? This gets a green. As an environmentally sound consciousness 
tree hugging shoe, what's it get? Uh, flash the lights. <laughs> can, we, can we do that? Yes! You nailed it on the environmental. All right, so uh, all in all, you know, for what this shoe is, I think it works. And yeah, works for all birds. It does, and mm. some non-birds. And some peoples. Some drones. All right, and uh, Robbie, I'd like it if people came back. Yeah, come back to this channel. We actually review a lot of performance running shoes. If you're here for the first time for yeah. Justin Allbirds review. And make sure you subscribe again, like this video. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. If you are a runner, check out our Strava group. Yeah, follow us on uh, Instagram where we have some more stuff about the shoe. Also, what I almost did was drop this shoe and we have a podcast called The Drop. Check yep. that out. And that's, and that's about it. Everything's in the description as, as well as shop links if you're trying to pick up the shoe. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, it's just black out that, yeah. murder out the midsole, you're good. Murder. Well, depending on what kind of funeral what it is. What kind of funeral is it? Yeah. Um, yeah.